Omsk is not a city that inspires love at first sight, but it is Siberia's second largest after Novosibirsk. And if you ask someone east of the Urals which city is the most Siberian of all, the answer may very well be Omsk. While Irkutsk, because of Lake Baikal, and Novosibirsk, due to its size, usually get all the attention, Omsk has grown organically to become a significant metropolis. It is about 450 kilometers north of Kazakhstan capital Nur Sultan, 600 kilometers west of Novosibirsk, and 2,236 kilometers east from Moscow. The current metro area population in 2020 is estimated at 1,182,000 people, making it the seventh largest city in Russia. So, what are the origins of the city? What important role did it play in the formation of modern Russia? And what drives it today? The creation of the Omsk fortress in 1716 was caused by the urgent need to strengthen the trade route to China, which was continuously harassed by bandits, and to help secure Russia's southern border. In the place of the fortress, a settlement soon emerged. Omsk grew rapidly throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, becoming a city in 1782. Then between 1838 and 1882, it became the capital of Western Siberia. Development of the city was catalyzed with the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway. Omsk became a significant logistic hub for the Russian Empire. Many trade companies established stores and offices in Omsk. British, Dutch and German consulates were established in order to represent their commercial interests. When the February Revolution of 1917 in Petrograd brought down Russian monarchy, the governments of Siberia tried to conceal this information. This was impossible as the news was quickly spread to all the cities on the main railway lines such as Omsk. The revolution in Siberia had very notable features. Firstly, the support for Siberian autonomy. In 1917, a conference was organized to pave the way for a constitution and independence, though it never came to fruition. The Bolsheviks remained a small and a rather unpopular minority amongst ordinary Siberians. As a result of the revolution, the new Bolshevik government was handing over all state-controlled lands to peasants. This did not really mean very much locally, because Siberia had almost endless land. Peasant debts were cancelled, but this too was insignificant, as no one in Siberia was repaying their debts by that time anyway. Furthermore, policies such as fixing grain prices artificially low of the market price, or trying to ban any kind of trade in food products were also a burden to the Siberians who lived from the flourishing small farmers markets. Coupled with the diminishing prospect of autonomy, such policies fueled opposition. The first uprising against the Bolsheviks started in Irkutsk, December 1917, but the largest underground movement fueled by the idea of Siberian autonomy formed in Omsk. Anti-Bolshevik white forces seized control of Omsk. Provisional all-Russian government was established here in 1918, headed by the Arctic explorer and decorated war hero, Admiral Kolchak. Omsk was proclaimed the capital of Russia and its central bank was tasked with safekeeping the former empire's gold reserves. By late 1918, the Bolsheviks had lost control over most of Siberia. The seizure of Omsk by the White Army was the beginning of a chain of events that turned the city into an important target for the Red Army. A provisional Siberian government was established and by this time Siberia even had its own flag, a rectangle, divided diagonally into green and white sections, standing for taiga and snow. Estimates put the number of foreign soldiers in Siberia at about 100,000. 80% of these were Japanese. The new Russia's supreme ruler, Kolchak, had a strong aversion to socialist revolutionaries, and not being from Siberia himself, he rejected the idea of Siberian autonomy. Neither of these traits increased his popularity. He tried, but was unable to bring the Cossack groups under his control, and he boosted the ranks of his army by forcing peasants to serve in it. In the end, he lost control, and this gave the Bolsheviks the opportunity to move in over the Urals. The Red Army and its leadership forced Kolchak and his government to abandon the city and retreat along the Trans-Siberian eastwards to Irkutsk. Bolshevik forces entered Omsk in 1919. Other towns fell and Kolchak was eventually arrested in Irkutsk and executed. By 1919, all foreign powers except Japan abandoned the intervention in Russia. By early 1920s, the civil war was a lost cause for the white armies. And throughout 1920 and 21, the Soviets had re-established themselves all across Siberia. The Soviet government preferred the younger city of Novonikolaevsk later known as Novosibirsk, to be the administrative center of Western Siberia, prompting the mass transfer of administrative, cultural and educational functions away from Omsk. This somewhat stunned Omsk's growth and sparked a continuing rivalry between the two cities. 
OMSK received new life as a result of World War II because it was built far from the fighting and had a well-developed infrastructure. Therefore, OMSK provided a perfect haven for much of the industry evacuated away from the front lines. Overall, it was a hard period for its citizens. They had a difficult time hosting about 200 evacuated industrial enterprises, 60 hospitals, a score of educational institutions, theaters, museums, and over 100,000 refugee migrants. Additionally, contingency plans were made to transfer the provisional Soviet capital to Omsk in the event of a German victory during the Battle of Moscow. At the end of the war, Omsk remained a major industrial center, subsequently becoming a leader in Soviet military production. In the 1950s, following the development of the oil and natural gas fields in Siberia, an oil refining complex was built, and with it, an entire town, oil workers, expanded Omsk greatly. It is currently the largest such complex in Russia. Gazpromneft, the parent company, is the largest employer in the city. As the center of oil refinery and petrochemical industry in Siberia, Omsk rapidly developed. In 1975, the millionth inhabitant of Omsk city was born. Its population increased rapidly by 20 to 30,000 people per year. What followed, though, is a familiar story common all across Russia with the collapse of the Soviet Union. State-run enterprises were no longer supported. The economy was in a state of shock as the government took a U-turn. Unemployment, hunger, inflation, and dire economic conditions dominated the 1990s. Since then, the economy has stabilized. Today, Omsk is a city with a strong manufacturing industry and refines and exports major amounts of oil. The most impressive area in the heart of the old town is Ploshit Subornaya Cathedral Square, which hosts Assumption Cathedral, reconstructed in 2007 on the site of the former cathedral that had been built in 1898. The original was hailed as being amongst the most majestic of the 19th century churches in Siberia. The original cathedral's fate was sealed in 1935, then Soviet city council demolished it. The bells were removed and sent to the smelters for recycling. This was how things stayed until 2005, when the go ahead was given for its reconstruction. Architects faced a difficult problem however, the original cathedral had been built using few drawings and none survived, so they resorted to old photographs. Then during excavations, archaeologists discovered the original foundations, which allowed a precise reconstruction of the cathedral's shape. Interior decorations today are entirely the work of local artists. While Omsk is not a particularly interesting city to visit, seeing as it's a workhorse of modern Russia dominated by industry, it is a city with an interesting history that's worth remembering. If Siberia had ever become an independent country, its beginning would have been here, and Omsk may have very well been its capital. Now I recommend you go watch my video on Novosibirsk. There I go more in depth into the Great War and its effects on the region. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, and make sure to ring the bell button, otherwise you will not be notified of my future videos. Now guess where this is? Geo Perspective out. That's all. That's all.